I thank the witnesses for their testimony. The chair will now recognize members for five minutes each for the questions, and the chair now recognizes the gentlewoman from Wyoming, Ms. Hageman, for five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting me join your committee today. I do find it fascinating that the advocates for this type of a, a radical reorganization of our federal lands and the relationships between our federal and state partners uh, refuse to participate in something of this significance, both in terms of the member of Congress as well as the witness that came up with this, uh, what I would describe as a harebrained idea. Uh, while we may be tough in our questioning when you're attempting to literally take trillions of dollars of value out of our economy, perhaps you should be subjected to difficult questioning. And if you can't, then maybe the rule ought to be you don't get to uh, participate in this kind of a policy discussion if you're not willing to allow or to, to have your, your ideas subject to our scrutiny. I want to thank each of the witnesses for being here. You've all been instrumental in addressing these NACs, these NACs, and what they portend for our economy and for the future of our ability to produce affordable food, energy, and housing. Mr. Oaks, your testimony refers to natural capital accounting, ecosystem services valuation, and the proposal to redefine conservation as a, quote, use under the Federal Land Policy and Management Act, or FLIPMA, all as backdoor land use regulation. And I think that is a great way to put it and something I dealt with a lot during my career as a lawyer. It seems the federal government is always attempting to control Wyoming's resources one way or another and through these various backdoor regulations or guidance documents or uh, frequent, uh, responses to frequently asked questions and that sort of thing. But I would love to hear more from you on this because from where I'm sitting, the Biden administration is trying to rewrite the rules through executive power and they are attempting to bypass Congress and shove state and local governments out of the way. My question for you, Mr. Oaks, is can you please elaborate on how the Biden administration is engaging in backdoor land use regulation? Thank you, yes. Um, thank you for that question. Yeah, so um, of course under FLIPMA, we have multiple use, that multiple use uh, doctrine and, the, and FLIPMA, of course, uh, Congress is um, uh, delegating the, the uh, management of public lands with that multiple use. Uh, with a conservation lease, if you elevate conservation leases to the same level as multiple use, uh, then, then you can uh, replace multiple use with conservation. Um, and I think that's the that that is really the key issue is that if if the uh, uh, the, the administration uh, creates a conservation rule uh, outside of congressional processes, uh, then you have effectively elevated conservation to the same level of multiple use and can replace multiple use with conservation and 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 replace those activities that are critical to states out in the West, uh, certainly Wyoming and Utah. Uh, with uh, a conservation uh, emission as opposed to multiple use. Well, and when I read the rule uh, proposed by the SEC related to changing the rules for the New York Stock Exchange, they specifically state that there cannot be multiple use. They will not allow for logging, grazing, mineral development, mining, etc. It is only this concept of conservation that is never defined. And um, there, there's a couple of things that have struck me about this entirely. Um, one is the, as I said, the complete reordering of the relationship between the federal and state government and a complete reordering of how we manage our federal lands. Um, the, the federal government owns over 600 million acres of land. The federal government owns 48% of the surface estate in the state of Wyoming and 65% of our mineral estate. A couple of weeks ago, we had the, a gentleman from the BLM appear in front of the Natural Resource Committee, and I asked him about NACs, about natural asset companies, and the BLM's uh, uh, involvement with this rule. And um, the BLM manages 245 million surface acres in this country and 700 million mineral acres, largest landowner in the United States. The way that this rule is set up is that literally the BLM could lease all 245 million surface acres and the mineral acres to China, 
uh, portions of it to Bill Gates. Uh, you could have Mr. Bloomberg come in and decide that he was going to lease the natural assets of Shoshone National Forest, thereby stopping all sheep and cattle grazing, all bison production, all logging, all water development, all of those things. Someone like Mr. Mr. Uh, um, uh, Bloomberg or Mr. Gates would have the ability to do that, which just shocks my socks off. But what really shocked me was when I asked the gentleman from the BLM about this, he didn't know anything about it. Does that surprise you? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, it surprised me. And I, and, I, and I kept pushing him. Are you telling me that the SEC never contacted you about the idea of monetizing and securitizing all of the natural assets of the BLM. And he said that they did not. And I think that that demonstrates either, um, maybe he wasn't being entirely forthcoming, maybe there were people in the BLM that they contacted, but not him. Perhaps the SEC and the New York Stock Exchange are arrogant enough to move forward with a rule like this without actually contacting the, the land use agencies. I mean, there's all kinds of, uh, of things that, that we could surmise from that. But the one thing that I think is very evident is that none of this was ready for prime time. They attempted to move forward with a rule that was going to dramatically impact states like ours, dramatically impact our ability to produce food, affordable housing, produce energy, and that they never even talked to the land agency that was responsible for management. I think that it just demonstrates how incredibly bankrupt this entire process was. I'd all, I'll just want to make one more point, and that is that I want to read from the rule. The exchange states that the reporting framework is based on the natural capital accounting standards established in the United Nations System of Environmental Economic Accounting. So in addition to all the other terrible things related to this rule, it would be the United Nations that would establish the accounting standards that we would have to live with as they stole our lands. Thank you. With that, I yield back. Lady yields. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Montana, Mr. Rosendale, for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr.